I'm not trying to torment her. A man charged in connection with a 2011 murder pleads guilty. Why he just wanted to put an end, he says, to the case. A mother shopping for her son's birthday ends up with a horrifying surprise. And I pulled out a dirty syringe. How a trip to Walmart has changed her life. The unofficial start to summer is right around the corner where you can beat the heat this weekend. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening. He says he wants to put the case behind him. Today, a man charged in connection to a murder nearly five years ago in Madison County pled guilty. Ryan Denholm is accused of bringing the shotgun his brother Matthew used to kill two men back in 2011. Matthew Denholm pled guilty to murder two years ago. Victor Puente was in the courtroom. He tells us what Denholm had to say to the family in our top story at 530. Today in court, Ryan Denholm said he wanted to bring closure to Zachary Flowers' mother. He admitted to bringing his brother the gun that was used to kill Flowers. The Army veteran was killed in 2011 following an argument at a Berea apartment complex. Police say Ryan's brother, Matthew Denholm, had gotten into a fight with two men when Zachary Flower and Kevin Price intervened. In court, Ryan Denholm admitted that he took a shotgun to that apartment complex. Made the mistake, which I realize now is a mistake. I grabbed a gun from of my brothers from my place. Matthew Denholm used the gun to shoot Price and Flower. He pleaded guilty to that murder and two other unrelated murders in 2014. He's serving three life sentences. Brian Denholm answered to charges of facilitation to murder, facilitation to commit murder, and facilitation to burglary earlier today. Guilty. Facilitation of burglary, how do you plead? Guilty, Your Honor. The recommended sentence for each charge is five years, running concurrently for a total of 15. Flowers' family said they weren't happy about the plea deal. There was nothing they could do to stop it. My whole purpose of being here today is to put this behind me and to bring closer, closer to Zachary Flowers' mother. Uh, I'm not trying to torment her. Denholm will be back in court July 22nd for his final sentencing. In Madison County, Victor Puente, WKYT. And because of the time he's already served, Denholm is already eligible for parole. New tonight, the trial for a man charged in a deadly crash nearly two years ago is underway. The jury has been seated and testimonies underway in Boyle County in the case against Jacob Smith. He's charged with manslaughter. Police say back in June of 2014, Smith missed a curve on Scrub Grass Road. His car hit a tree and crashed into a creek. That crash killed Emily Snow. Police say that speed and alcohol played a role. The trial is expected to last at least four days. State police have arrested a man wanted for stabbing another man to death in eastern Kentucky. Our county by county coverage at 530 begins in Floyd County. Troopers say Trenton Ward stabbed Timmy Ward at a home on Denwood Road in Martin. They believe that after the stabbing, Ward went to his aunt's house, changed his clothes, and threw his old clothes into a creek. Right now, Ward is only charged with tampering with physical evidence. In Pulaski County, a man is in jail accused of pulling another man out of his car and beating him up. Deputies say they found 33-year-old Jason Wesley in the intersection of South Highway 27 and Slate Branch Road. Witnesses told deputies that 32-year-old Joshua Piles dragged Wesley from his vehicle and assaulted him while at a stoplight. Wesley was flown to UK hospital. Deputies charged Piles with assault. And in Franklin County, a judge will not seal records in the case of a former Kentucky constable accused of running a prostitution ring. Thomas Bonta is accused of running the operation out of his home and office earlier this month. Bonta's attorney asked that some of the evidence against his client be sealed, but the judge has denied the defense's request to keep those records under seal. A Western Kentucky mother says she was stuck by a dirty needle she found in a pair of pants from Walmart. Mary Crawford was buying gifts for her son's birthday at a Walmart in Monroe County. She says she bought a pair of sweatpants and brought them home. But when she was putting them in a gift bag, she says she got poked. Crawford found a syringe with blood in it. She later learned it was an insulin syringe. And because it was used, Crawford says she has to undergo extensive testing for hepatitis C and HIV. I had to be tested for HIV and hepatitis and a drug screening. 
I have to go back from that in 30 days and be tested again, and then again in six months from that 30 days. And because there was blood in the syringe, Crawford says she has to live her life like she has hepatitis C or HIV. And she also says for the next seven months at least, she cannot share anything with her husband or children. Walmart says it's working with Crawford to investigate what happened. We are going from soggy spring weather to a taste of summer. What a switch. Summer in Kentucky usually means warm, muggy, and a threat of storms. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey <laughs> has an early look at that. You got the trio down pat, and that's exactly what's going to happen as we go into the middle and latter part of the week and right on into the big weekend. Short term, though, guys, it is awfully, awfully nice. Temperatures into the low and mid 70s right now. 75 London, where we have just a little more in the way of some clouds across eastern Kentucky. Look at that blue sky over top of Lexington. Hey, best map I'm going to show you for the entire day, Defender Radar Network, because nothing is on it. 74, 70, and 62. Those are the numbers from 7 to 9 and then to 11 o'clock as we start to cool it down. Maybe a touch of valley fog beginning to fire up by that time. We'll see a little fog tomorrow morning. Then summer air surges in. It gets warm, it gets humid, and yep, the threat for some at least scattered thunderstorms will return to our weather picture. And guys, when I come back in just a few minutes, we'll show you the overall setup and how it is taking on a definite early summer look just in time for the big weekend. Chris, thank you. The sun is shining today, but the Fayette County School Board and its members has winter on their minds. Tonight, the board plans to discuss getting rid of snow days. Instead, they would join other schools across the state in learning from home on snow days. Tonight, board members will decide whether they want to consider the Kentucky Department of Education's non-traditional instruction program next school year. Now, that means when the school calls off classes, the district would still conduct class through non-traditional means, like online. More than 40 of the state's 173 school districts participated in the program in this past school year. Memorial Day is right around the corner, and the city of Lexington is getting ready to mark the unofficial start of summer by opening up the pools around town this weekend. New at 5:30, Mike Linden takes a look at their new summer schedule. With the start of summer less than a month away and a holiday weekend just a few days away, city pools across Lexington are opening up this weekend. This Saturday, the 28th, four aquatic centers in Lexington will open for the summer. Tate's Creek, Castlewood, Woodland, and Southland. Pools at Douglas Park, Picadome, and Shillito Park will open next Saturday. For the rest of the week, Parks and Recreation staff will clean and prepare the pools for the public. After a cooler than normal May, city leaders say warmer weather should bring the crowds this weekend. Typically, the beginning of the year is fairly busy for us. It's Getting to come swimming, they haven't got to swim all winter long. It's new, it's fun. So we usually have a good turnout um, in May and June. You can still swim for free this Saturday at the Southland Aquatic Center. The city is hosting Pool of Palooza from 12 to 4. Anyone is welcome to attend. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. City pools across Lexington are changing hours. Monday through Saturday, pools will open an hour earlier at noon and at 1 on Sunday. Safe to say that everyone wants to keep their homes safe from burglars. Locking doors and windows can certainly help, but the key may be to think more like a crook. Burglars leave a fear in homes that can be hard to explain and impossible to forget. That feeling never goes away. This woman, too fearful to show her face a year after her home was burglarized, she says gone with her priceless family jewelry went her sense of security. I have now the blinds closed constantly. So what kind of homes do burglars target? They find ways into our homes that we might not have predicted. The author of A Burglar's Guide to the City says think like a burglar, an architect to be prepared. He says even a patio railing can tempt a thief. This kind of thing would be an ideal handhold or uh, something that you could use to climb up to the second floor. At least three suspects. Detective Joe Alves says this apartment building was burglarized a few weeks ago. You could easily scale that wall, jump over that small fence, and then they entered the balcony of this apartment unit. Bottom line, nowhere is 100% safe. So here are three things to keep in mind. One, reconsider that scalable privacy wall or large bush. If you could climb it and hide behind it, it may be perfect for burglars. Two, get to know your neighbors. Three, use simple security measures like alarms, cameras, and most of all, lock your doors and windows, all of them. This woman's window was closed but unlocked when it became a window of opportunity for a burglar. It's a terrible, terrible feeling. 
Another tip to keep burglars away, don't advertise new purchases by, for example, putting the box of new plasma TV on your curb so everybody can see it. You're advertising to a burglar what's inside the house. Still ahead on WKYT News at 5.30, Four Roses Bourbon announcing a limited edition release. It won't be around long. We'll tell you when you can get their new single barrel bourbon. I'm Bill Bryant. Some new numbers are in about the money being spent to influence those you elect to represent you in Frankfurt. And three Kentucky universities now have a help wanted sign on the president's office. The bottom line is on the way. I'm Phil Pendleton in Pulaski County at 6 o'clock. A man makes a 911 call himself after he was shot in the stomach. Police say his neighbor is the suspect. For all your hearth and grill needs, shop BarnhillChimney.com. Get the credit approval you deserve at the all-new Big M Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Nicholasville. If you have a job at $199, you can be approved today. During the Drive and Discover event 2016, Jeep Cherokee's $199 a month. Visit BigMSuperstore.com. Who says mornings can't be happy? Not us. Introducing the DQ Hardest Working Happy Hour with drinks that work even harder than you do, blending sweet flavors like never before. Only DQ has drinks that multitask in the morning even if you can't, like $2 premium fruit smoothies, $2 ultimate frappes, and $1 iced coffees. Every weekday morning until 10.30 a.m. at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. No way, it's oh, a Chevy. Wow. It's the Chevy Memorial Day Sale. Time to get the crossover that's right for you. Trax, Equinox, or Traverse. It's very impressive. It's awesome. This is incredible. It'll be a good road trip car. The Wi-Fi is cool. It's fancy. I love it. Get more than you expect for less than you imagine during the Chevy Memorial Day Sale. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this Chevy Equinox LT for around $189 a month. Oh my gosh, I need this car. I don't want to live with the uncertainties of Hep C. Or wonder whether I should seek treatment. I am ready. Because today, there's Harvoni, a revolutionary treatment for the most common type of chronic hepatitis C. Harvoni is proven to cure up to 99% of patients who've had no prior treatment. It transformed treatment as the first cure that's one pill once a day for 12 weeks. Certain patients can be cured with just eight weeks of Harvoni. Harvoni is a simple treatment regimen that's been prescribed to more than a quarter of a million patients. Tell your doctor if you've had a liver transplant, other liver or kidney problems, HIV, or any other medical conditions, and about all the medicines you take, including herbal supplements. Taking amiodarone with Harvoni may cause a serious slowing of your heart rate. Common side effects of Harvoni may include tiredness, headache, and weakness. I am ready to put Hep C behind me. I am ready to be cured. Are you ready? Ask your Hep C specialist if Harvoni is right for you. Kentucky lottery sales have funded grants and scholarships for over half a million Kentucky college students. So every time you play, the Commonwealth wins. Fueling imagination. Funding education. Save thousands at the all-new Big M Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Nicholasville, where you get 25% off MSRP on all the remaining new 2015s in stock. That's up to $14,000 off MSRP. Make the short drive to Big M Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram today. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Donald Trump is meeting with potential vice president candidates. And Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton is only getting a slight advantage in the delegates from Kentucky's primary. Bill Bryant takes a look at the numbers in the bottom line. Good evening. Special interests spent just under $10 million trying to influence policy in Frankfurt during the recent session of the General Assembly. The Courier-Journal reported today the total spent is about $9.5 million, and most of that was spent by about 700 companies, associations, and groups trying to have a say and sway in legislation. The Kentucky Chamber of Commerce spent nearly $150,000 to push its agenda. Hospitals, banks, and the Kentucky League of Cities were also 
also big spenders. There could be some movement behind the scenes in the Veep stakes. Donald Trump met with Republican Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee today. Corker is the former mayor of Chattanooga, who now heads up the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And billionaire businessman Mark Cuban said over the weekend that he would consider being the running mate of either Trump or Hillary Clinton. Cuban said some have urged him to run for president on a third party ticket, but he called that an impossible proposition. It was a razor thin margin for Hillary Clinton in Kentucky's primary last week, and she gets only a slight advantage in the number of pledged delegates from the bluegrass state. There are 55 pledged delegates. The state Democratic Party says the final math gives Clinton 28 of them, and Bernie Sanders will get 27. The remaining five are super delegates who are free to decide on their own how they will vote at the convention. The indication is that Clinton has an advantage there, too. And KSU President Raymond Burse's resignation effective Friday means that there are at least three Kentucky public universities now looking for new leadership. Moorhead State President Wayne Andrews and Western Kentucky University President Gary Ransdale have both set their retirements for next year. Bill Bryant, WKYT. The city of Richmond plans to name a new police chief by the middle of summer. Larry Brock's last day on the job was yesterday. He told us today he will help the city find his replacement. Last month, Governor Bevin appointed Brock to the Kentucky Parole Board. Chief Brock says the goal is to have a new chief in by mid-July. And for now, Assistant Chief Bob Mott will serve as interim chief. A summer surprise for bourbon lovers. Four Roses Bourbon is planning to release a special bottle next month. The distillery announced today they will release Elliott Select, a limited edition single barrel bourbon. This will be Brent Elliott's first limited edition release as master distiller. Four Roses will produce and distribute about 8,000 hand numbered bottles of Elliott Selection in the U.S. They're expected to hit stores in June. Elliott Select will sell for roughly $125 per bottle. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Monday, absolutely gorgeous day out there that is wrapping up, coming off of a weekend that started out very ugly, ending though with much better weather, and that rolls on into this final full week of May. Are you kidding me? May just about over. Memorial Day weekend. Staring right at us in a few days, and you know what else is staring at us? Summertime, ready to surge in from west to east across Kentucky. Right now, low and mid 70s, about as good as you could get for any time of the year. Defender Radar Network, hi, bye, nothing to show you locally. Let's bounce it out, see what we can find. All right, little trouble across the Plain State. Severe weather yesterday. This is going to be a prime corridor for severe weather over the next several days. East Coast is ugly. That's the ugly stuff we had around here several days ago. You know what's going on? The squeeze play. High pressure right on top of the Ohio Valley. As it slowly works its way toward the east, the warm and the humid air is on the way over the next few days. Let's break it down day by day. Tuesday, it's another awesome one. Temperatures tomorrow up from today. Upper 70s to low 80s into much of the area. Oh, yeah, we keep the sunshine. Now, Wednesday... We're into a pattern by this time where humidity is on the increase. Can't rule out a stray thunderstorm or two. Thursday, similar setup, and you're going to notice that summertime feel really kicking into high gear. So if you are a fan of very warm, borderline hot temperatures and humidity, got the forecast for you over the next several days. Short term, though, still feels nice out there, 58 by 11 o'clock. Here we go with that hour by hour for Lexington on your Tuesday. 50s in the morning. Upper 70s to low 80s coming up tomorrow afternoon. We keep the blue sky. So Tuesday looks like today. It's a little warmer, though. Wednesday, we start to change it up a little bit. The muggy factor is into play, and look at those temperatures on Wednesday. Likely into the middle 80s into much of central and eastern Kentucky. It's a forecast you're going to be hearing a lot of us saying the same thing over and over and over. It's almost dog days-ish, if you will, for your Memorial Day weekend forecast. Mid to upper 80s Saturday, Sunday into Monday. All three days will feature high humidity and a daily threat for a shower or thunderstorm. No, I'm not saying it's going to rain every single day. I'm just saying that every day will feature at least a thunderstorm showing up on your Defender Radar Network. Do you think the folks who just bought a boat are happy to see this forecast? Or maybe you just put in a pool? How about summertime 
as we close out the month of May. We're going to sweat it all out together. We really are. And I, I, if one day features more sun than clouds this weekend or early next week, 90 is a possibility. Ooh. We talked about this oh, a few weeks ago. Not right. It's good though, okay? Wow. We got to balance out this cool somehow. Thank right. you, sir. We've got a couple of problems. One is a vehicle fire at uh, Manowar and Beaver Creek that police are working. Uh, and there's a crash at Winchester and Elkhorn. The collision at, uh, at the, this one was on uh, Richmond Road at Old Richmond has been cleared. Drive times this afternoon to Nicholasville, still holding her own less than 15 minutes. Uh, to Paris, Paris Pike looks good. Now back to you in the studio. Former Wildcat Wesley Woodyard hosting his charity golf tournament this afternoon, Rob. Well, there have been so many great ambassadors after their playing days at UK ended, none better than Wesley Woodyard. We will hear from Wes and the man who recruited him to Kentucky. Joker Phillips was on hand at the University Club. It's all next in sports. CBS Tonight. Mr. Reese, we're about to crash a wedding. The entertainment uncensored. How much would it be to get you into something more comfortable? The guests. Oh dear. Unwelcome. That's not a crasher. That's a killer. You're invited. Oops. To the most unforgettable event of the season. That was the most stressful wedding ceremony I've ever attended. New person of interest. CBS tonight. And catch back-to-back -back new episodes tomorrow. Clients come into the office. The government has said, no, I don't believe you. You're not disabled. The major problem with Social Security Disability is that most people who sign up are denied at the initial level. If your claim's denied, don't give up. Call us immediately. We'll appeal your case. We can do an effective job of representing you that will get you the benefits that you deserve. Call Morgan, Collins, and Yeast. 1-800-55-WILDCAT. Do you want to lose weight quickly and safely? Do you want to be healthy for a lifetime? Kim did and lost 238 pounds at Ageless Medical Weight Loss. Betty did and lost 135 pounds. The Ageless program is a medically supervised, affordable weight loss solution. Call today for a free consultation. During Sleep Outfitters Memorial Day Sale, we give you three great reasons to take home a Tempur-Pedic. One, find Tempur-Pedic queen sets on a Temper Up adjustable base for just $34 a month. Two, receive a Visa prepaid gift card worth up to $400 with your select Temper adjustable purchase. Three, get up to six years no interest financing on many Tempur-Pedic sets. It's three great reasons to buy Tempur-Pedic during the Memorial Day Sale at Sleep Outfitters. Well, this new Sonic lemonade is great, huh? Strawberry, blue raspberry. I can't believe they set that lemonade stand up right across the street. Who is? Oh, she saw me. Great. Why does that matter? Because I'm scoping out the competition for Sonic. Those cute little kids selling lemonade. What's oh, the big deal? Real cute until they take your lemonade stand by force. That was your lemonade stand? Yeah, feels like yesterday they did it. When did it happen? Yesterday. Iced or frozen, our ultimate lemonades can't be beat. Also, get half price shakes after 8 p.m. and a free slush when you download the new Sonic app. At Hair Win, we've been helping people for 125 years. If you've been injured in a life changing accident, we can help. Contact us at helpingkentucky.com. Hair Win. Visit helpingkentucky.com. No better, Lexington. I'm Philip Weisenberger. My family has been milling grains from Kentucky farmers since 1865. Through six generations, we've learned that quality takes hard work. When you buy Kentucky Proud, you help keep our traditions alive. Look for Weisenberger Mills and other Kentucky Proud products available every day at Kroger. Right now at Kroger, Weisenberger Biscuit Mix is 10 for $10. And pick up Kroger Sour Cream or Dips and get 10 for $10. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. Stay connected to the news that matters to you. Like WKYT on Facebook. Former Wildcat Wesley Woodyard hosting the One Putt at a Time tournament today to support his 16 Ways Foundation and an absolutely great day for it. Among those turning out at the University Club, Mark Stoops, Danny Trevathan, and Tim Couch. The 16 Ways Foundation is aimed at promoting self esteem, responsibility, academics, and fitness in youngsters. And Woodyard was excited to have everybody out. 
So it, it's good, man, that they, they believe in my dream. And, you know, it's just a, a great day. We got beautiful weather, and I'm going to go out there and attempt to swing some clubs. <laughs> what kind of a golfer are you? Uh, I'm a very subpar golfer right now. So uh, it's good. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get some good tips and pointers from guys today. So, you know, I'm just excited to, to have this opportunity to, to, to be blessed in this opportunity. Former UK coach Joker Phillips was on hand today and he was warmly greeted by everyone, including Mark Stoops, who was there, and athletics director Mitch Barnhart. For the first time in a long time, Joker is out of coaching at the moment. He spent last season as receivers coach with the Cleveland Browns. Joker is the man who brought Wesley Woodyard to Kentucky. I just remember his cousin trying to, uh, um, to to sell me on him, and mm -hmm. the first play I saw, he scoops the thing, uh, fumble, and goes 60 yards for a touchdown. And I was like, we probably need to take a look at this guy. And you know, just his enthusiasm for the game, his enthusiasm for life, um, and, and other people also. You know, one thing you, you, you need to to look at when you're recruiting along with people, and, and I think mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest assets that Wes has is he's a he's a people person. The SEC baseball tournament will begin tomorrow. Kentucky is the eighth seed and will face ninth seed at Alabama. These two met in the regular season with UK winning the series two games to one. In that three game set back in April, two games were decided by one run and another decided on a walk off grand slam by the Cats. For the Cats and the Tide, this is really a must win game for hopes of moving on to the NCAA tournament. No, I would think that Mitch and I are looking at this thing the same way. I mean, you, you got to win this game, and you got to you got to get to the double elimination part. You probably got to beat John on on Wednesday and and, and build those RBI points. You know, and that's uh, that's where we are, and it's, that's what you've got in front of us, and we're looking forward to it. And SEC baseball postseason honors handed out today. We'll have that in the next half hour, and hear from Mark Stoops. Stay with us. We're right back after the break.